Today, we've got 27 different countries highlighted on this map. These 27 countries will be competing today for world domination. We'll be spinning this wheel to determine which country is on the hunt, then this compass to see which direction they'll be launching an attack. The matchups are single game elimination. The team that wins the game takes over the country they defeated, as well gets to add the best player from the fallen country to their roster. Also on the map are six different upgrade spots. If a team crosses through one of those countries while launching an attack, it gets applied to them. I'll explain more about each upgrade when we get to it. The roster I'm using was built on PlayStation by this man right here with a few minor tweaks from yours truly. The roster includes all-time legends such as Yao Ming and Dirk Nowitzki, current and future NBAers like Shea Gilgis Alexander and Victor Wembinyama, as well international players that I've never heard of like 90% of the Georgia roster. I'm not even going to try with those pronunciations, bruh. One thing I'll say about the rosters is there may be a player or two missing or misplaced. Try not to get too caught up and if these are the rosters we're going with, we're going to have fun regardless. And the final wrinkle in this video and and uh, this is actually pretty important. Team USA will be exempt from this challenge until the very final game of the video. However, the rest of the world sorts itself out. These American Avengers will be watching from the sideline. When the 25 other countries have been vanquished, Team USA will take on the world super team in a do or die matchup with the fate of planet Earth on the line. What? Well, you know, um, like in basketball terms, nothing. Yeah. And the last thing I'll say is every single sports gaming YouTuber and their grandmother, doesn't matter which sport, has posted an imperialism video. This one specifically out of the FIFA community is the one that caught my eye and inspired this specific video. So shout out to that man. Link in the description. And without further ado, let's find our first team to launch an attack. The first one of the video. <laughs> okay. Well, that's a good one right out the gate. Serbia. I'll show you why in just a second. But first, which direction is Serbia going? Oh, this is exciting. Okay. That would be Southeast. I'll be honest. I'm not good with directions. This video is going to be a struggle. However, we don't have far to go because Southeast of Serbia is just, it's just right there. And that is Greece, my friends. What a banger matchup to get things going. Serbia has a top three roster easily in this challenge. Nikola Jokic, Paige Stojakovic, Vladi Divac. We got a bunch of international and current day NBA stars. Meanwhile, Greece has Giannis. The Serbs meant business out the gates, getting their man involved in possession one. Oh, what? R really? That's how we're starting? Th oh man, Serbia is really in it to win it. Not to be outdone, the other NBA MVP on the court wanted to have a say early. Oh yeah, Giannis. Oh yeah. <laughs> Giannis and Jokic. This is going to be a lot of fun, this video. Yep, I can feel it. Giannis was going absolutely bonkers in the first game of this video. He had 41 points in the first half alone. Greece had a lead, obviously. Thanks mainly to Peja Stojakovic and his willingness to chuck, though Serbia came all the way back in this game, eventually taking the lead in the fourth. Man, Serbia is just too good on paper. Even with Giannis going off, they're still up 10 with under three minutes remaining. Oh, how do you leave Peja wide open? Greece! Probably the dagger. Wow. 67 points and now he joins Serbia. They are low it already. And the Serbs have a brand new dynamic duo. Look out world, literally. Serbia doesn't acquire a huge chunk of land mass, but a second country, that's clutch. Greece gets removed from our wheel and the second team country to launch an attack, Finland. Okay. Finland is going to the Southwest. All right. A very interesting matchup carved out as Southwest of Finland is Germany. Yep. That means prime 97 overall Dirk Nowitzki versus the next Dirk Nowitzki question mark. Lori and the Finns were actually in it to win it, competing with Germany on on both ends deep into the third quarter. But down the stretch in the fourth, Germany's talent advantage would win out with Dirk hitting the eventual Perfect. dagger. Finland and their awesome basketball logo. Is that a dog? Well, they're gone. Germany takes over another country. And welcome to Lori Markkinen now on Germany. Our next matchup was pretty inconsequential as Israel took on Turkey and got destroyed by actually a reasonably talented Turkey side. It was at this point I realized I had forgotten to turn the upgrades back on on our map. Fortunately, none of the first three matchups would have been affected by them, so we're good. Our next Next matchup also wasn't affected as the Czechs made a very short trip northeast to Poland, a game in which the Polish side surprisingly won with ease, a 26 point win. Georgia was dealt a blow when they spun southeast, missed every upgrade narrowly and had to take on Australia. Oh boy, and uh, they they really could have used that upgrade, Georgia. Yeah, I'm 53, 53 plus 5, 58 point loss. Good math. Australia starts their expansion into the rest of the world. We've managed to knock off a few of the uh, weaker countries with all due respect, oh my. Slovenia is an interesting one, man. Uh, where are they attacking? Southwest? And that's a uh, super short journey. Just a little train ride, probably. Italy's got a pretty nice team. Andrea Bargnani, Paolo Bancaro, Danilo Gallinari. Slovenia has Luka. And uh, um, they've got Luka. But maybe Luka was indeed all Slovenia needed. He had them competing early in the game. Oh, oh, that's too easy.
easy. You got to stop all Italy. Luca's going to go at that all day. Unfortunately, the Italians would break away from Luca and the Slovenes in the third quarter, taking a big lead. And wow, I was kind of looking forward to a Luca Slovenia Cinderella run. I guess not. Italy gets a nice geographic expansion and they pick up one Luca Doncic. That is very nice. Slovenia's roster actually wasn't that bad around Luca. I can't believe they fumbled the bag, Argentina. Where are they going? Where, where are they going? Argentina, Manu, South. Okay, that's going to be tough. It's all a matter of how you view the globe here with Argentina going southwest. I'm going to say they come out over here on the other side of the world and will face China. I don't really know if that makes sense, but uh, southwest of Argentina is just ocean. Another relative one-man show, Yao Ming and China taking on Manu, Gabe Deck, and Argentina. In a shocking twist I probably should have seen coming, Argentina was just way too small for Yao Ming. Oh, that's too easy. That's way too easy. Argentina has no one that can compete. But the team that once upset the Americans in the Olympics, they're gone already? Manu, 43 and 10. He's going to look nice next to Yao. I honestly can't believe Argentina's gone. That is a shock to the system. Italy? Italy would head dead south to Nigeria, but in the process, crossed over an upgrade. An upgrade on the map, giving whatever team crosses through that country the ability to add one American legend that isn't on Team USA. Which means an additional Luka Doncic, who Italy already picked up after beating Slovenia. They're also adding Jason Kidd, who I added to their squad because, let's face it, they need a floor general to get Luca Paolo Bargnani the ball Italy. Wow. This might be a little unfair. They might be a little too souped. I might have to take them down a notch. Anti-Italian discrimination. And oh my gosh, I forgot Team Nigeria was uh, not very good, except for freaking Hakeem Olajuwon. So this game will either be Hakeem going God mode and beating this stacked Italy squad, which would be amazing, or um, yeah, the Italians are going to also add Hakeem. Let's sleep in dogs lie. And it would end up being the former Unfortunately, we didn't get to see God mode Hakeem, but the Italians only won by 15. Well, that escalated quickly. We'd see Japan for the first time attacking Northwest, a short trip to China. In their debut, though, Yao and Manu were a bit too, as the kids say, OP, and China won with ease. We saw the Australians come back again for their second game, attacking West, eh, slightly North. It would send them across a couple oceans to take on Puerto Rico, a pretty sizable mismatch on paper, and the scoreboard would end up emphatically reflecting that. And just like that, 10 countries are already gone. We're down to 17, still haven't seen powerhouses like Canada, Croatia, France, but already Italy is the runaway favorite. China, Australia, they've gained some ground as well. This is getting very interesting. And as we continue to cruise along, uh, we just lost Puerto Rico, Lithuania. They're kind of an under the radar team. And Lithuania will be attacking in which direction? Northwest. Okay. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Northwest is to the upper tippy top regions of Canada. Oh, wow. Yeah. They also go through Greenland, which holds a 95 overall upgrade. Should be self-explanatory, but whatever country passes through that upgrade gets to take a starter up to 95 overall for free. With Sabonis number one, Sabonis number two, Big Z, and Jonas Valanciunas. Lithuania was already looking very nice, but they have no guard. They are just all big men. So let's take NBA legend Sarunas Marcialunas up to a 95 overall. There you go. And uh, yeah, I'm thinking my Canadians are in some trouble here. Canada came out ready to go, though, undeterred by Lithuania's roster, getting out to an early lead. And they would not take their foot off the gas in the first half. Oh, look at that board. Look at that. But Sam D'Alembert, too big. And how about those Canadians there, bud? That is a 26-point victory. Very nice. Sorry about that, Lithuania. You should stop. Believe it or not, I added Arvedis Sabonis instead of 95 Marcio Lunis because this Canadian team really needs big men and Sabonis should be able to compete with Yao, Hakim, others on the way. After removing Lithuania, we'd see Dominican Republic pop up. They'd end up attacking Northwest slightly, which because USA is grayed out for the time being meant to match up with Canada right back at it. And the Canucks dominated again. 22-point victory. I warned you about that. Cat dropped a near-trip dub and a loss, though. Shouts to that man. Who ends up joining Team Canada, giving them a now glut of big men. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We're back again, China, baby. Lots of directions we could see China heading northwest. Okay. That's looking like a straight shot to the former region of Finland, now occupied by Germany. Wow, but China's actually turned the tables. They now have a three-point lead just under four minutes remaining. Manu wasn't on the court for China for some reason, but a poor double on Yao left a wide open dunk. Franz Wagner, coast to coast. Good dime. Yo, Germany runs the break. They're right back in it. Manu was finally back on the court for China, but Germany had subbed out Dirk for some reason. Oh, huge steal. Yao. Wow. Great play. Dirk was finally back in the game for Germany with under a minute remaining. Oh, that's space. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. There you. Okay, Manu. I see you facilitating. That was the right time to do it. Oh, he's wide open. You got to hit that, Dennis. You got to hit. <laughs> 
Dennis, I mean, a mid-range in that spot was actually dumb, but it was wide open, man. China adds to their increasing real estate on the map. And while they could definitely use some guard help, Dirk Nowitzki will look good on that China roster. Our next spin saw us get the always competitive Spain. As in always competitive in world competition. Y'all know what I was saying. We're going east. Oh, that's a banger. Yeah, that's a banger. East is Spain versus Italy. Spain got the Gasol brothers, Ricky Rubio, Miritich, Jose Calderon, a really good deep roster. But Italy is taking over the world. Do I have to make more Sopranos memes? No, I think we get it. Despite Italy's star power, Spain was competitive, even leading this game in the first half. By late in the third, though, Luca was leading the charge for Italy, doing everything as they were right back in the game. We got another banger. Italy now up five with under three minutes left. Oh, Hakeem inside. That's way too easy. That's way too easy. Come on, Spain. Oh, good backdoor cut, pow. There you go. I'm always rooting for chaos. Let's get an upset, Spain. Yeah, that's good defense. That's good defense. No, you let Luca run right through. <laughs> How did he do that? Spain was in serious danger. They couldn't waste any possessions. Oh, that's deadly. That's deadly. Paulo, big steal. They tried forcing it to pow. And of course, defense, as always, leads to offense. Oh, that's not Luca or Hakeem or Jason. I don't know who that was, but that was probably the dag. We could probably chill on getting Italy for a little bit. Nobody ch oh, oh my gosh, we're back with China. They're low-key the only team that could probably stop Italy right now. Do we get crazy Northwest? Oh boy, it was more West North than Northwest, and this takes China to Australia's territory and crosses them over 95 overall. Wow. And China's in bad need of a point guard. This is the only one on their roster, Sun Ming Hu. My friend, you are going from a 72 up to a 95 overall. Um, yeah, that might have just broken this challenge. It was all Dirk Nowitzki and Manu Ginobili, our new 95 point guard. He didn't even do that much. It's crazy. We still have teams that we haven't seen even once. It, oh, there is one of them, Latvia. Latvia would end up traveling southwest into nearby Poland, where we'd see a relatively tight match, but Poland did grab their second victory. We had a crazy turn of events heading into game 17 as Serbia turned up on the wheel for the first time since our first game. Remember when they beat Greece and took Giannis? Our compass would then spit out west, slightly south, we'll call it southwest, which from the tip of former Greece, which is now Serbia's territory, took us to former Dominican Republic, which is now Canada's territory, and it took Serbia through our add one American legend upgrade country. I figured they too needed a facilitator, so welcome to Serbia, John Stockton. This is an insanely loaded Serbian team. I am scared for my Canadian brothers, who do have a pretty nice team, I will admit, adding Carl Anthony Towns and Arveda Sabonis, but this might get ugly. Oh, look at Shea. Look at Shea blowing by the defense, throwing it down. I love it. Even with Nikola Jokic inexplicably on the bench in the clutch, the Serbs were still in it to win. Oh, it. good pass, Giannis. Good pass. He's doing it all for them. Yep, we got a bat. Oh, look at Cat going to Cat. Oh, Cat just got rejected by Vladi Divac. Who needs Jokic in there? Oh, that's wide open, by the way. John Stock. John Stock. The block, the assist, the three. Serbia's cooking. There you go. That's a good look. That's. Oh, Shea sold. Shea sold, and you don't get the award. Uh oh, that's space. Giannis. Oh, he took the angle. Yo, CPU Giannis is playing so smart right now. Was Jamal Murray going to stop Giannis? Come on, man. Come on. Probably an and one, too. This is crazy. The biggest coup yet on our map as Serbia takes over all of Canada's territory and sticks their big old logo right through my heart. We spun and landed on Poland for the first time in a minute. They'd be heading southwest with their attack, which meant they were unfortunately entering the territory of Team China. Um, now just what in the fudge is going on here? China is only up by four? No, no, that is such a bad double. Okay, we didn't get crazy with an upset, but good showing, Poland. We finally saw Brazil pop up for the first time. They'd be heading slightly northwest, which I deem brought them, unfortunately, into Italy's territory. And unsurprisingly, into a big fat L. Biggest chunk of land acquired so far by those Italians. On to game 20, we spun and landed on Turkey for the first time in a hot minute. They were sent narrowly northeast, which I said took them into Serbian territory and across another upgrade. This little boy with the blue face means we get to add any current American star that isn't on Team USA. And I decided to add one Anthony Davis to this Turkish squad, which again is pretty low-key talented. Now they got a star as well. Can A. Disney and the Turks upset Jokic and the Serbs? I kind of think not, but let's see. Yeah, no, I, I, I should just stuck with my original instinct. They could not upset the Serbs. In fact, the only country helped from that whole situation is indeed Serbia, who grab Anthony Davis for themselves. Okay, we're really into the thick of it now. Only 
only six teams remaining plus the states, but somehow there's still three teams we haven't even seen once. That would all change though in our next game when I finally landed on Mexico on the wheel and also had to send them northeast, which took them into another first time country of France. It's about time. Sava très bien, France. Our wheel is getting so <laughs> slim right now. This is crazy. And there's another first timer. Okay, about time, Croatia. I've been waiting for it. Had we gotten Croatia earlier, they might have had a good chance in this challenge. Yeah, north is going to be trouble because north, slight northeast is heading directly into China territory. I was so excited for Croatia in this tournament. So many cool legends like Petrovic, Kukoc, Dino, Raja. Yeah, but running into China at this stage. Well, yeah. And honestly, a shout out to the Croats, man. A 22 point loss uh, to this China team. Nothing to be ashamed of, although I'm disappointed. I wish we saw Croatia earlier. Italy, France, China, Serbia are lone for remaining nations waiting to take on the states who's going to make it through. France was next up to launch an attack. Unfortunately, China is inescapable at this point. Northeast, we got France. We got Team China. Feels like an appropriate time to mention that Team France. I've been excited for them because I did put Joel Embiid on their roster. And that's because Joel Embiid said he might play for Team France at upcoming international tournaments. And you know what? That was good enough for me. Let's go, Joel. France had the top end talent to compete and make this an actual matchup. But China's depth had allowed them to pull away and control this game. But the script had flipped into the fourth quarter as we had a one point game with five minutes remaining. Oh my, oh my, don't try Victor. Don't try Victor. My man was like 12 feet off the ground for that one. I was waiting for about two minutes to see a basket from either team here. No. <laughs> What? I finally see a basket and it's Victor blocking it into the rip. What? In the oh, Victor, you got to step. Victor, you could have gone all the way. Wait, he got another rebound. Okay, Victor, it was ugly, but it worked. One point game. No way China's plan is to keep trying to attack. Oh my. Oh, go in transition. Keep going. Evan Fournier to the free throw line. That'll do. Nah, they're really just force feeding dirt. What? <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, okay. Okay. You know what? Whatever. Dirk's going to do what he does. France needs a basket here. Tony, you got a mismatch. Oh my word. Yes. Go right by Yao. Kick it. Joel. Okay. I don't know why I just said kick it. I mean, he had someone wide open, but France takes the lead. China is running down the clock. They're going. Oh, I thought they were going to their man Yao draws and's open wait that's the 95 overall point guard he's gonna have to chuck up a shot oh he, <laughs> he missed what was that offensive set China wow um Nando DiColo led team France in scoring in just 15 minutes of play what in but the just like that after all the heavy lifting done by China throughout this entire video France overtakes each of their regions on our map and that is a lot and it was tough to pass up on adding Dirk or Yao Ming to the team but France needs guards so I gave them Manu Ginobili there would be no rest for France either after their big upset as I spun and landed on Italy we'd be told to send due north right into France's new territory and through an upgrade spot. In need of a starting small forward, I gave Italy American legend Vince Carter, a guy who knows a thing or two about uh, <clears throat> destroying France on the world stage. Jason Kidd was doing everything he could a near triple double through three quarters as Italy cling to life in this game. But there's something in the water with this French team. They're so good. Up 15, under five minutes left. France didn't want Italy to have any life, so they turned to... Uh-oh. Uh-oh, Victor. No, Victor with the dagger. Bro, France is just built different. That victory from France meant they conquered Italy's empire, leaving just two nations outside of the US left on our map, Serbia and France. But because these two empires are so spread out on the map, it doesn't make sense for me to spin and find a direction because I would have to choose a random spot on the wheel to send them out from. That means no more upgrades will be applied. Just the two best teams from the rest of the world battling to see who will compete with Team USA. Oh, but France does add Luka Doncic last second for beating Italy last game out. Both countries are deep with top and talent. Pick your fighter, ladies and gentlemen. The two teams were basically deadlocked through a quarter. This is an absolute battle. France became the first team to finally pull away with a small lead into the fourth quarter, but Serbia was fighting. And as expected, it was just a four point tight contest with five minutes left. France is in the driver's seat though. Oh, nice play. Luca to Joel, that's way too easy. Oh, that's space. My boy. My boy, Shay from Canada to Serbia. This is a great game. Oh, yeah, Shay. Oh, yeah. Bro, I love to see a Canadian thriving, even for Team Serbia. France had absolutely no chill in this game. They wanted to put on a show. Oh, no way. No way. In the clutch, they lob it. What in the world? Yeah, Serbia's got to run their offense through Nikola Jokic. Yeah. Bro, I was going to say he would find them a good shot. That was not a good shot, though. Oh, no, that could be the dagger. That could be the dagger. Manu. Oh, my. Dude, Lucas floor general ability has been on display in the clutch. That's game. A third straight massive victory for
for Team France meant we had just one game remaining. Upgrades were no longer in play on our map, but Team US of A finally was. I chose to add Giannis Antetokounmpo to a stacked France roster who have every position covered. They have top end talent. They have depth that could beat probably any other country in the world, except Team USA is, well, you see, they have literally everybody, 99, 98. It never ends. This is scary. France got off to a great start with possession one running through Luka, resulting in a basket as always. The Americans were able to work a mismatch for MJ on their first possession, but the GOAT was off. The game started to slip for France towards the end of the first half as they just couldn't score. But fortunately, that did not last. A massive third quarter from Luka specifically, who was up to 36 points through three quarters. And the French had swung the game by 20 points. They were up by a bunch. And one, Joel. <laughs> They, they're dominating. The French are dominating. I am truly shocked. France has a seven point lead with under five minutes remaining. Can they close it out? The Americans elected to close this game without LeBron on the court. Michael Jordan, that's a good look. That's a good look. MJ gets great shots in these simulations. Oh, Tony Parker, what a cross. That was kind of an insane block though, Bill Russell. Oh, MJ, another step back. MJ, another... I thought he was missing that for sure. Wow, he's the GOAT. Oh, that's a mismatch. That is a KG. This could be a dagger. This go on the hook shot too. Nah, France, you gotta let Luca touch the ball here. I don't like this. Yeah. God, I, dude, I knew it. There you go. Get Luca the ball. That's a good look. No, he bricked it. He bricked it. Luca really took a contested mid-range in the clutch. What are you doing? And there it is. Team USA, as I thought, dominant, but only a six. But France, they were right there. I can't believe they choked that one away. And as I feared when making this video from the outset, it is indeed Team USA basketball champions of the entire world. Somebody's got to say it. You hate to see that. This video was an absolute blast to create so many epic moments, so many surprises, to be honest, other than Team USA winning, of course. Please drop a thumbs up. Let me know if you enjoyed down below.